All right, good morning, Bismarck Man and Dave Floor here on the Dakota Housing Network, along with Jim Walsh, as always, Hello. on the board. Hello. And we have a very special guest today, Jim. Oh. Our own Dot Frank. Yay! Hello. Bismarck Mandan Home Builders, and it's the Parade of Homes it Week. It is, That's, it is, yes. We Thank bring... goodness I'm not a builder, otherwise I don't think I would have been here. Yeah. But um, we have had plenty of time to prepare in the office to support all of the builders that are in the Parade of Homes. And so we're just kind of yeah. sitting, waiting for doors to open, which is at 6 o'clock this evening. There we go. Yeah. Okay. So if you got any questions for Dot, 663-1270. Um, but as always, we got to talk a little interest rates first. Okay. Um, interesting. It's pretty, pretty flat this last week. The bond market. Now that's a different story. The treasuries and that they've had, they went way up. Um, and the experts out there, um, I'm going with mortgage news daily here, Matt Graham, they're thinking that, uh, today the bond, the, the mortgage rates might catch up to the increase in the bond yields. And that would mean we might see a little uptick in rates today. As um, soon as today. As soon as today, we'll see. And I did look before I left, and they were, it was inching up a little bit. So we'll see. But it's still, you know, the best rate on a conventional loan is still in the, you know, 4% or three and seven eighths range. So it's still pretty good. Uh, government rates are still at three and a half. So, you know, hey, all, all's well. All is well. All is well However, world. you know, we do have a lot of members that, are in the lending business. And I know yeah. that applications have gotten very, very expedited. So yeah. if you want to beat any kind of uh, yes, chance that <laughs> they're going to rise, you can get those apps in and maybe you could lock yeah. and load if for rates. If you're looking at a house and and you got a great opportunity this weekend to go look at houses, uh, if you find something you like, <laughs> go talk to your lender. Have your lender prepared. Prepared. Talk to them Prepared, now. yes. And have, I might be in. Uh-huh. I might be calling you tonight or Saturday yes, yes. or at latest Monday. Mm-hmm. I'll give you Sunday off, <laughs> but I'm going to call you. I'm calling. Because I might want this. Okay. Um, now, another big thing that's going to start happening that might affect interest rates, maybe, is the Fed made it official at their last meeting here in September that they're going to, they're not going to raise their the federal fund rates, overnight rate, probably do it in December, maybe. But what they did confirm they're going to do is they're going to start selling off their mortgage-backed security portfolio, which will be interesting because is there a market out there for it? As these come due, will somebody else step up to buy without getting enough of a price for it? Which, if they start saying, I want more for this, um, then that's going to raise interest rates. So we'll see. Um, what happens with that? But they're gonna they're gonna reduce their balance sheet by four billion per month in mortgage-backed securities, and then it would increase another four billion each quarter up to a maximum of twenty billion per month um, over I I think it's like an eighteen-month period is what they're looking at here. So that is something to definitely keep your eye on. Uh, maybe the market's already priced all this in, and it won't be a big deal. Hard to tell. Uh, don't know enough about it to know what those big financial bigwigs are doing out there. So um, now in line with that, which I find is interesting, you know, we did all this quantitative easing. That's why the Fed has this huge balance sheet of uh, mortgage-backed securities, right? Okay. A Fed, a Federal Reserve economist came out this month, uh, a guy from St. Louis. I'm looking for his name here. Um, oh. Just a second. Okay. Uh, Stephen Williamson, he's from St. Louis. He said he doesn't know if QE even worked. He said it boosted the stock market, which I guess we can say, okay, thank you. Um, But whether it did anything to help the economy is very debatable because, you know, our gross domestic product didn't really get much more, it never hit 2%. You know, our economy isn't any better off than Canada, which didn't do quantitative easing. They were, and actually, were, were, our economy did not do as well as Canada's over that time frame of 2010 to, to now. So he's saying, you know, it was nice, it raised the stock market, but it didn't do much else. So, yeah, and the thing that's so interesting is, you know, hindsight at times is 2020. However, in in that particular circumstance, not necessarily because you've got the statement that it it might not have had an impact, but without it, would we have been at a greater disadvantage? You known, know, so maybe yeah. we didn't gain, but perhaps we didn't lose as much as we had yeah. would have if if yeah. we hadn't entered into Problem that. Problem is, we can't go back and do no it over and change again. over. 
or let's see, see what, what happens happen. if we change the circumstances. Yeah. So um, <laughs> it's interesting. No, one thing they did say here is that, um, you know, even though Fed Chair Janet Yellen and most economists expect the balance sheet operation to carry minimal market impact, history shows that anytime the central bank balance sheet re- is reduced by a large amount, it's often a very bumpy road and leads to recessions. That's encouraging. Yeah. Well, and, <laughs> you know, and I guess the Fed's been around since the early 1900s, so it's only a 100-year oh, you know, history. Sh- so, you know. Yeah. How can you count on yeah, that? It's not like it's been around for 4 billion years like Earth <laughs> or anything. So we'll, we'll see what happens. As you just said, we don't know if we would have been worse off if they wouldn't have done it. You don't. You know, and the thing that I think is and, so interesting is we hear from a lot of community members um, when it comes to home purchasing. And, you know, when is the opportune time? And and there really isn't a, a good answer to that. It's kind of like, when should I have a baby? Well, you know, you have the baby. There's no opportune time to have a baby. But when you do, things just work. It falls into place. And I think the same can be said if you're a smart shopper when it comes to making a home purchase. You know, and smart just means don't overextend yourself. Mm-hmm. You know, have those honest conversations about not only the luxuries that you want but the luxuries you can afford and 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 make the decision to jump into home ownership the the rates while there's a a chance that they could go up that chance always exists and they're still incredibly incredibly low relative to what you know some of our you know senior homeowners have experienced in their lifetime and so Mm -hmm. just i'd say you know the hesitation has been really hard on our industry because people are dragging their heels and i think time is not to anybody's benefit when it comes to home purchasing because we live in an incredible market where prices appreciate so one thing is guaranteed uh, at least based on the statistics we've seen here in the bismarck manning community and that is that your house will continue to appreciate which is an excellent thing so get in now yeah and that is true locally here in our two cities, I, I mean, even before, the oil, that has nothing to do with the oil boom or anything. No, we they, get they were, they mired in fine. all of the mud that you see with the national yeah. media and even across the state, and you really have to take a close look at your periphery. What is happening in our immediate vicinity? And take comfort knowing that we are in a really good position yeah. here in bismarck Man. Yeah. I just don't think, historically, I don't think buying a house in bismarck Man is a losing proposition. For the most part, you can have a cycle where I bought it at a high point and then I got to sell and it's they're down a little bit. Uh, that that could happen, but overall, here generally we speaking, have not had yes, huge price swings one way or the other. It's pretty much steady and uh, yeah, it's just a good investment locally. Here, Absolutely. Definitely. So, um, all right. Well, when we come back. From the break, we are going to talk about the Parade of Homes, and we got and other stuff to do with home builders. and All know, sorts so. of stuff. Yeah, yeah we right. are an open book, so ask those and questions. Guess whose birthday it is today? <gasps> is it Jim's? Meatloaf. Oh, I was going to say, I'd be a little more excited if it were Jim, but it's yeah. Meatloaf's birthday. Well, that's yeah. equally exciting. Well, we, I don't know if Jim has any records meatloaf. out that we could play. Yeah. You, you have a record out that we could play if it was your birthday? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, so we'll play Meatloaf then. Okay. Happy birthday, Meatloaf. Right now, 54. The Red River Farm Network. Ag News is here on Super Talk 1270. Okay, coming back on Meatloaf. He's 70 today. Two out of three ain't bad. Yeah, all right. I didn't realize he was that old. He's, he was that, old when he his, got famous. Apparently. That's his age, not his belt size. Okay. All right. He's slimmed down, though, I believe. He has. From, the from like, this time period. He's probably thinner than I am by now. Yeah, I think he's slimmed and down. that's saying he, something. He kind of had to because he collapsed more than once on stage. That's right, yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, we're back on the Dakota House Aid Network. Dave Floor here with Jim Walsh on the board, as always. Uh-huh. And our very special guest, Ms. Dot Frank from the Bismarck Mandan Home Builders. Hello again. All right. So, big day. Big weekend for the yes. home builders. We've got the Fall Parade of Homes. Absolutely. So, dot what? Tell us what's going on. How many homes? All that good yeah. stuff. Yeah. So, you know, we delivered uh, twice a year the opportunity for community members to get out and step inside new construction. Uh, this is a highly anticipated community event, and I know the builders really mm-hmm. look forward to it. It's an opportunity to usher literally thousands of people through their homes, where they can get feedback. Um, they 
They can hear about those amenities and perks within construction that people really appreciate. And it's, it's just a wonderful opportunity as a community member to experience the growth of Bismarck Mandan. You know, too often in a lot of these newer developments, unless you've got family or friends that live there, there's not a whole lot of reason to explore those neighborhoods mm-hmm. um, because they're residential. You know, you're not yeah. driving through not necessarily to get. There. Yeah, absolutely. And so this, you know, kind of forces you once you purchase that first ticket, forces you to get out and explore Mm -hmm. the neighborhood. And, you know, I had the opportunity on my way over here to stop down and visit with uh, Bismarck State College carpentry class uh, and their instructor. And they are building down in South Meadows. And even myself, I I fail to you know get out often enough to recognize what's happening around me in this community. And just driving down there, the explosive growth in South Bismarck is mm. phenomenal. Um, it's just really interesting to see that the different types of housing that are going up from twin homes to uh, you know single family. You know you've got multifamily. It's just it's a really exciting time. And this the amenities, brand new park as I'm driving down there that I hadn't recognized. Yeah. So now next time I come around, I got to bring kids with so they can. Yeah experience the new playground equipment. Uh, But again, it's just a a great chance for you to get out, come out with your friends and family. Kids are more than welcome to come explore these homes. Uh, In fact, we make it free for them. And and it's just Uh the ticket that needs to be purchased by the parent. And we're really, really excited about the lineup that we have for people this fall. How much does a ticket cost? So a ticket is $10. That $10 ticket gets you admission into all 33 homes. Okay, so it's a family ticket. It's it's one person for the adult. So each adult adult will need a ticket. Kids don't need tickets. So each adult, it's $10, gets you into all 33 homes over the course of four days. So you can reuse that ticket throughout the four days because you're going to be hard-pressed to hit up all homes in one day. Um, so with that ticket, it gets you that admission. We're doing something really, really exciting and special this year, and that's in recognition of the Cancer Awareness Month in October. Our parade ends on October 1st, and so we are going to enter the month and hopefully write a big check out to the Bismarck Cancer Center Foundation. Oh, and so as you're out and about um, visiting these homes and when you purchase your first ticket, you should be asked if you want the traditional $10 ticket or if you want to pick pink and go with our limited edition pink ticket, ah. which will include a contribution to the Cancer Center Foundation. Awesome, I, and you have a little button. I do, you'll also receive a button. I got a big button. Those yeah. who purchase the ticket will get their right. choice of a small button that they can wear to you know, right. demonstrate that they acknowledge the impact that cancer has on us as a society, and they're doing something to make a change for the better. Super, great job for you guys. Yeah, we're excited, yeah. we're yeah. excited. I mean, it's yeah. just worked out really well. It's been <laughs> excellent working with uh, the folks out at the Bismarck Cancer Center foundation i mean they've Mm -hmm. really welcomed us and allowed us to use a venue that you know it's kind of like crowdfunding in a literal sense we get thousands of people that come and experience these homes and why not expose them to what the cancer foundation Mm -hmm. does yeah so okay in order to do that you just ask for the pink ticket pink ticket and ticket and the pink ticket is twenty dollars um it literally is a pink ticket so you can flash that we have a limited number of those available we're hoping to sell out of all the pink tickets um and so we ask that you get out there and support the cause okay so great deal you you pay twenty dollars per person and then you go you make a donation plus you get to look at some homes absolutely that's pretty good week absolutely yeah no, and as long as we're talking about that dot, you know, um, Bismarck Man and Home Builders, besides, you know, creating jobs in the economy and building homes for everybody, it, you guys are involved in stuff like you're, you know, you take this idea with the cancer month. Um, I'm in the Optimist Club. I, we just gave you a little recognition here for contributing to the Avenue of Flags. Um, it, other stuff that the home builders do. Yeah, I mean, we year. really try to find ways to support the community um, in a direct relationship to what our mission is. And our mission is all about providing access to housing, promoting housing, and encouraging our builders to, you know, continue creating in a community. And so to that sense, you know, we have some perpetual partnerships that we've created, one of which is in the spring. So every spring we partner with the Boy Scouts and um, we have the Boy Scouts join us and our builder members to get out and collect trash throughout the developments. And we do that in anticipation of our spring parade of homes. So it's a win-win. We're cleaning up the community. We're giving the Boy Scouts an opportunity to generate some funds for their organization and the trips that they take. Um, and, and it's a very visual, you know, we've got people that drive by and honk and wave sure. as they see yeah. us yeah. collecting the trash. So that's something we've done for a few years now. Um, in the past, we've teamed up with the Girl Scouts. Uh, the Girl Scouts just this last year did a project with us for the 2000, uh, 
16 Fall Parade of Homes where they created welcome mats. They hand painted welcome mats oh. that we shared actually with the Housing Finance Agency to yeah, give to first time yeah. home buyers. Yes. That was a wonderful project. You know, we are working again with the Bismarck Mandan Symphony Orchestra to help bring back the Holiday Home Walk. We did that for the first time last year. We're doing it again. We're just going to be bigger and better than ever, and that benefits the Symphony Orchestra in town and the arts. Mm -hmm. So we're always looking for opportunities um, to partner with organizations where we can draw a direct correlation to housing in our industry and provide help simultaneously to them. Well, you you and your folks over there, great job. Thank yeah, you. That's, Thank that's you. Super to hear that. Um, okay, so let's get back to the parade of homes then. Okay, now you got these fancy magazines that you that you've got strewn all over town. But even better than that, you got an app. Yes. So, you know, I am a fan of print personally. You know, despite yeah. my demographic positioning, you know, I should be highly connected electronically. I love the the feel and the smell of print products. So, well, I'm at the helm. This is not going to disappear. We still like having that magazine. But for those who um, are more mobile, we do have an app. Uh, It's available both Android and Apple. It's a free app. All you have to do is search BMHBA. Mm -hmm. It's super slick. It allows you to plan your route. You can get turn-by-turn driving directions. You can take notes. You can take pictures. You can connect directly with the builder of that home through that app. It's just a a wonderful, wonderful feature that we provide for the parade goers to make it easier for them to navigate and find these homes. The other thing that we're really excited excited about is we have a dedicated website to the Parade of Homes. And so if people are online, they can search bizmanparade.com. And we've got some wonderful features there where you can, again, quick access to the magazine electronically. Um, We've got access to our sponsors because this event is really helped um, through the sponsors that we have, both those who are giving away prizes. We've got prize sponsors. We've got an app sponsor. And so you can view who is supporting the HBA in that regard. Um, And just... Again, it's just options yeah. for people to utilize to make it as easy as possible to navigate these homes. Well, I'm looking at the the map here in the paper thing, and you know, uh, the the app would be very handy just for the driving directions. Yeah, I mean, we can only fit so much on a print piece. It's kind of like, <laughs> where are these places? <laughs> It's a big cluster yeah. um, in print where you yeah. can zoom in online yeah. and in your app to see exactly yeah. where you need to be. You know, because you got one up, well, one's up a talk tree mm-hmm. area, and then you go uh, east of 83 and stuff. And those are, hey, it's not. And some winding roads yes, and stuff. So the yes. app would definitely be just for that. You the app is great. Yes. Yeah, take a both. right at, take yeah, a left exactly. at. <laughs> so I would recommend downloading the app and using it, if nothing else, for the driving directions. And then you got, um, you know, you got a handful over in Mandan, and looks like the majority of them are in Bismarck. Um, but Mandan down in the Lakewood area, and then out uh, a little bit further to the west, um, Heart Heart Ridge is that the development? Yeah. The so you know, we typically see a, a larger segment of our parade pieces in the Bismarck area, which is no surprise, just because of population mm-hmm. differences. But Mandan continues to have a strong showing. You know, one that we were kind of surprised, um, but we always enjoy seeing in the parade. It just didn't happen this time around. Is Lincoln, the community oh, of Lincoln, because yeah. Lincoln continues to be yeah. another wonderful option for residents yes but this time around no parade homes we're hoping maybe for our holiday home walk we'll see yeah you know and you just look at this man bismarck's getting big it is getting big but you know it's south bay i mean go down south like you just said get down down south and see what is happening because you know a lot of attention is given to north bismarck which is due because there's a lot that's happening in north bismarck um from a retail perspective there's a lot that's happened in north bismarck both east and west um down south you don't see that uh commercial and and retail growth but the housing growth down south is tremendous so where's the park you were talking about the park is right off of washington and 48th so keep driving yeah okay it looks spectacular in fact, I would have stopped and maybe tried it out myself had I had the time, but I would have been then late for your show. Yeah, okay. Well, thanks for showing up. <laughs> okay. So that's even south of Burley Avenue. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Oh, boy. That's out there. Down in South Meadows. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, all right. So now you mentioned prizes. Yes. Okay. What's yes. the prize thing? You know, the, the homes themselves, I would hope, are prize enough to be able to go in and see what our builders are constructing. But if you need a little bit more motivation, we do give away two prizes. And uh, the way to be eligible for the prizes is complete the, the information on the back of your ticket and drop it at the last house. We are giving away a $1,000 gift card, car- courtesy of our friends at Carpet World, oh, which is awesome. Okay, that is. Uh, and then we're also giving away a Recar vacuum. That's a $1,600 vacuum. It is worth 
every penny. I have one myself uh, and have had one for quite some time. And that's courtesy of our friends at J&R Vacuum and yeah. Sewing Center. Awesome. Boy, those are, that's too nice prizes. <laughs> Excellent prizes. And we're wow. very grateful for our friends at both Carpet World yeah. and J&R. Okay. Um, okay. Let's see. What else we got? Jim, are we, are we taking a break now? Summer night. Would you offer your throat? Okay, we're taking a break the and we're doing. The red roses. Oh my goodness. Paradise by the Dashboard Light from Mr. Meatloaf, who's 70 today. Yeah. Um, this is probably his most famous song. I don't know. Well, actually, this is uh, oh, another no. song that kind of sounds similar. Oh, okay. You took the words right out oh, of my yeah. Okay, all right. Okay. We'll be back on the Dakota Housing Network. Right now, 54. On Twitter, Facebook, online, and YouTube. Supertalk1270.com. But he won't do that. Okay. I don't blame him. We're back in the Dakota Housing Network. Dave Floor, Jim Walsh on the board. Dot Frank, special guest, Bismarck Man and Home Builders. Now, Jim, there's a brainchild behind Meatloaf. Yeah. His name Jim is. Jim Steinman. He is sort of the musical Svengali behind the yeah. the meatloaf sound. Yeah, and you the said he, orchestrator. Yes, and he did stuff with Barry Manilow. He, yeah, and, he did a great record with Barry Manilow called "Read 'Em and Weep," yeah. and basically it sounds like Barry doing a meatloaf song, okay. but it's very well. It, it's a good record. I I might have to try and see if I can li- hear that somewhere. It's a marriage of styles. Interesting. Barry Paradise Manilow by sounding, the Candelabra Lights. Yeah, <laughs> Barry Manilow sounding like meatloaf. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Well, we were talking uh, the Fall Parade of Homes. If you have a question for Dot, uh, 663 1270. Okay, Dot, we've been talking about all these great homes. And there are, I mean, I'm looking through this magazine, and there's some nice pictures in here. And I'd like to see the inside of them. Yes. Okay. But there are some rules if you come. There are some rules. Yeah. Okay. Oh, Tell they're, us what they're they pretty are. easy to live by. Okay. You know, just some of the things that we ask is that, you know, you respect the home because uh, this is yes. a home that is going to belong to someone, if not someone already, who's yeah. opened it up and allowed the builder to showcase it. You know, we invite and encourage kids to come, but keep an eye on kids. You know, my kids included get rambunctious, like to run around, climb stairs, hide in closets. Uh, just keep a close eye on them uh, yeah. so they don't scare others or themselves. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the other thing that we like to, to talk about is just, you know, the common courtesy of not bringing food or drinks into the homes. Mm-hmm. Um, some of our builders will have, you know, sweet treats or snacks. And so that's kind of a sign that it's okay to to have that once you enter the home. But um, try not to carry around the big slug or slurpee that you've picked up at a gas station on your way during the break. It might spill on some nice carpet. It might, it might. Um, We also ask that you ask lots of questions. Some builders are really comfortable allowing photography in their homes. Um, Others, not so much. If if you're hesitant, please ask and talk to the builders while you're there. If if you're curious about, you know, where that cabinet line come from or what color is on the wall or, you know, what type of flooring is this? Uh, Our builders really like to share what it is that they're doing um, and offer that type of advice and expertise expertise to you as a homeowner, whether it's something that you're looking at, you know, moving into and building yourself, or maybe you're just in the market for remodeling. Talk. Now's yeah. your time to That's ask the rule. experts. You have to ask questions. You have to ask if you questions. Go, you have to ask questions. That is a rule. Okay. Um, now, uh, how about the, you know, people would look through the magazine or the app and the house is going to have a price on it. Okay. Is that that, that, is that price locked in on that house? That's what it is? Or what? So the way that we request our builders to, to share their pricing with us is to let us know what it would cost to reproduce that home on a comparable lot so that those who are out looking at the houses can get a sense for you know affordability and options. Mm-hmm. They really like this house and they like the location. They can assume that it's going to cost close to what is priced out in the magazine. The one thing, though, that we like to remind uh, house hunters of is you might fall in love with a house in a particular location and think it's out of reach. You know, I love the layout. I love the style of house. It's up in Eagle Crest, but yikes, I can't afford it. Talk to the builder because that floor plan in that house might be reproducible on a less expensive lot in the community. And so if you're curious, just ask. Yeah. So if you find a house on five acres... He could probably maybe build the same house on one acre. Exactly, or acres exactly. Or yeah. You know, real yeah. estate's all about location, and location yeah. makes a difference in pricing. And that pricing is incorporated into the cost of these homes, so that you know what it would cost you to build this house yeah. where it's at. Yeah. Okay. Um, no, are all the homes for sale? 
I this is what I would like to say. I I would like to say that all of the homes are for sale. Maybe not that home at that location, but the builder would welcome a transaction if you like that home. Some of them are. um, Generally speaking, if the price is disclosed, so if you see a price, it's available. Um, Undisclosed. Is, is has nothing to do with pricing. The reason that we have an undisclosed category in this year, there's just two of them, is because those homes are pre-sold, so they are not for sale mm-hmm. um, in their you know current status and their current location. Yeah. Um, and it's undisclosed because out of you know respect for the buyer, they just aren't disclosing the price. Absolutely. So you have to ask the builder, what do we got here? What do we got? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yes. All right. Uh, let's see. I'm looking through. You have questions on here, so I'm going. Uh, I think we've covered everything. Okay. One of the the most frequent questions we ask is where do you start any home on the parade route? Yeah. Um, in fact, they are in order according to their price. So yeah. by all means, it, it's probably not the most efficient to go from house one to two to three to four because location no. is is not the order that these homes are are numbered in. No. It's based on price. Because I'm looking at number one is in South Meadows and Bismarck, which is. Well, that's south of Burley Avenue. And then number two is Meadow Ridge and Mandan, which is northwest Mandan. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't go one to two. No, no. I mean, no. you could, but, you could, but <laughs> it's hey, going to take you a well, long there's time. A, there's a few houses in the way as long yes, as you go yes. there. So don't do that. Okay. Um, yeah, good good tip there. It is by listed by price in there. The other big question is tickets. Where do I get a ticket? And oh, the yeah. answer is any house on the parade route. Okay, so you just need to find the magazine, download the app. And go to one of the houses. Or follow the signs. The signs are out. They'll They're point you over. in the right direction. Absolutely. You've inundated Bismarck, Mandan. We have. We signs. have. And I should say thank you to the Bismarck and Mandan Commission uh, for allowing us to put the signs in the right of ways. Um, you know, a big shout out, too, to the traffic director in Bismarck for providing some guidance on what mm-hmm. we can and cannot do with that signage. But it, it really helps out to have um, an arrangement with the community that supports an event of this nature so that we can make yeah. sure that people... People can safely find these homes. Exactly. Very good. Okay. Now, you know, that's something probably nobody even thinks about that you had to go to the city commissions and Absolutely. ask. Absolutely. We had to ask. Yeah. Put yep. the signs up. Yeah. Okay. Um, anything else you would like to impart upon us your wisdom and guidance? God, about I mean, just gear homes? up. Have a good time. Okay. Have a good time. You know, talk about the homes. You know, imagine yourself in the home. You know, take some of the concepts and ideas along with you to see if you can replicate them yourself. We like DIYers. Um, mm. Take advantage of the fact that it's city cleanup week. Clean out your house so you can put it up for sale there you go. and move into one of these new homes that yeah. we're showcasing. Yeah. I tried to get rid of something this week. Yes. Mine, and they didn't take it. No, what it was, was too, it? Oh, it was too heavy. Yeah. It's supposed to be what two men can lift. Oh, they put a, They even put a sticker on it for me. That said too heavy? They said too heavy. It's, and they, it said one person. So I think oh, they, I don't know if they changed. Oh, maybe. I, it was I was two. two. I always thought it was two. Because I used a cart to yes. put it out there. And I figured, well, I, if I, I another, can do it. If I had yeah. another person, I could lift this. And they said no. Yeah, no. So I, I moved it back. Be mindful of what you can I'm going to have to haul it out to the landfill myself. Well, actually, what you could do is just put free on it, and I'm sure someone will take it. Well, I, yeah. usually that you don't even have to put a free sign on it that people just come and take it, <laughs> which they're not supposed to do. But. Just stick it in the back seat of your car with the window rolled down yeah. and go away for an hour. Okay, there we go. Window All right. Window. Okay. All right. Um, and the, you know, one other thing. Uh, you know, The magazine, and I assume this is on the app too, the whole bunch of advertising – from all the affiliate members, yes, not just the home builders, yeah. but the affiliate members in here. So if you like, a, you know, if you're thinking, I don't know who, I don't know lenders, I don't know who they are. You know, go through it and look and see who. Absolutely, and we do print our directory. So like if you're curious, you know, about who belongs to the Bismarck Man and Home Builder Association, we have our directory right yeah. in the magazine, so you can yeah. look through and, and see who to contact first when it comes to those questions you might have, yeah. whether it's plumbing or financing or electrical work. I mean, they're all in there. Yeah. So that's that, and that's a great resource right there, and that's in the app all the time. That you can look it up, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So it's got you, the links. You click on it, it takes you to the website. Got the link, click on it, starts calling them. Yeah. So you can even use that outside the parade homes Absolutely. because if you're looking for somebody to do electrical or something and you don't know anybody, that's a great place to start. Yep. Yep. So it's a it's an app that can be used all year round. Year round. Okay. All right. Okay. So uh, we'll come back to the home show uh, last segment, but let's talk about um, you know hurricanes. Harvey, Irma, uh, thankfully, Maria did not get to the United States yet. I don't know. Is it still hanging around out there? I don't know. I haven't paid attention. Um, Jose missed us. Uh, but you've got 
you know, in the United States, you have the Houston area, and then you got the whole state of Florida um, that got hit, and then you've got Puerto Rico, which is just devastated, along with a couple other smaller islands, Barbuda, which I'd never heard of before, but you know, they're going to need people, workers, materials, all this stuff to rebuild this, uh, the, all these homes that have been wrecked. Um, how do you see that affecting things up here as far as our home builders and that being able to keep workers here? I mean, is that going to have an effect on anything? I think it will. I mean, and, and it might be nominal. It's, again, hard to pinpoint what the, um, you know, what can be directly attributed to rising costs in particular? Because that's where we're going to feel a pinch is in rising costs. And whether it's rising costs due to lack of, of additional inventory because it's being dispersed elsewhere or because those resources are down um, in the form of you know oil production and the impact mm-hmm. that that has on asphalt and tar, which is used in the housing industry. And so we will have some of those effects. Talking to some of the builders, they're already seeing and anticipating some price increases when it comes to uh, the lumber that mm-hmm. they're going to have to acquire for home building as well as those asphalt and tar products. Um, what's really interesting, though, and I think inc- and encouraging with the, the administration that we have right now in Washington is that they're recognizing the needs to look at regulations that in in normal times are very beneficial for our industry, but in times of need, they need to scale back. So one of the things that that we've been made aware of is with the the hurricanes in in um, the South, in particular, you know, pulling back on some of these OSHA worksite inspections, pulling uh-huh. back on some of the requirements that are necessary um, for lead paint uh, regulation. And while the the contractors are still paying attention to and abiding by those, not having to wait to have the paperwork signed off on, to have the the home inspected before they can proceed forward with the work. Mm. We don't have time, the luxury of time, yeah. to to work on these projects. They need to be done now. And so it's it's really great to see that the administration is is recognizing yeah. that that and making the the temporary changes in order to expedite okay. rebuilding nice yeah okay well we'll we'll keep talking about this when we come back from the break and jim what are we going to listen to now oh this meatloaf? is the uh, manilow thing i talked about oh okay barry manilow doing oh, meatloaf that. apparently right now 61 dave ramsey is heard here super talk 1270 all right, like a bat out of hell on the Dakota Housing Network. It's the fall parade of homes with the Bismarck Man and Home Builders. Okay, Dot Frank's here. Not necessarily the kind of association we were looking for. But oh, wasn't it? Oh, like a bat, bat out of hell. We're looking at all the homes. Come on. <laughs> all right. Where it's Meatloaf's birthday. That's why we're That's playing right. Meatloaf. Big 7-0. 70 years old. Yeah. Okay. And he's actually thinner than I am now. Yeah. Go figure. Yeah. He was thinner than he was when he was famous. Oh, yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. Dot, when we uh, came back, and if you have any questions for Dot, 663-1270, um, when we went into the break, we were talking about uh, the effects of Harvey and Irma on Florida and, and Texas and, and whatnot and, you know, what the cost, you know, what could be like with cost of materials and how the current administration is backing off on some regulations to help speed up the process or not having to wait for inspections and that. Um, you know, it, it seems like every time there's a big storm somewhere like this, you know, like it was Katrina, Sandy, everybody said, oh, price of sheetrock's going up. Yep. <laughs> that happens. You hear that every time, and I expect it will. Yeah, and, you know, that's you one know. thing that was put out on alert to the members of our association through our uh, National Association of Home Builders is that drywall prices are expected to rise. Yeah. You know, and a lot of that um, comes from just the increased demand for drywall down south. Yeah. And, you know, being up north, I mean, we're in a great position, love where we reside, but we're not at the center of transportation when it comes to delivering on these products. And so, mm-hmm. you know, first come, first serve, which yeah. is going to be, um, you know, to our detriment. However, you know, I think we've got a lot of proactive builders in our community who have had the ability to work, you know, really closely with their suppliers, locking in prices and finding ways to um, minimize any type of impact on the mm-hmm. end user. And so yeah. I'm confident that, you know, while while this will pose a challenge, they'll rise to that occasion and, and yeah. try to work out um, as best of a, a deal and accommodation for the buyers yeah. in the end. Yeah. And what it comes down to is, I mean, they, they're still going to be able to get the material probably but it's just at what cost and, and what timing if, mm-hmm. and timing and what effect does that have on the cost of a home being built or remodeled and then 
it, or would there possibly be a delay because, hey, I can't get my hands on w this material that I need to finish your house? Yeah, you know? best case yeah. scenario, you know, the, the implications are, are nominal at best, but yeah. you, you just don't know until, yeah. you know, they begin that rebuilding process in earnest. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I came across this article, you know, Houston homeowners begging for help. Um, the city's got nobody, you know, they're they're short of workers down there for this. Okay. Do you, is anybody worried about people currently working here getting like a better offer, <laughs> so to speak? in Florida or, or Texas. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of interesting because you, know, you could look at it the same way that we've experienced in, in years of late when it comes to the, the oil industry and, yeah, and how we yeah. were that uh, state that was able to solicit and pull up workers yeah. into our community because they were having a hard time where they resided. I don't know if that's going to happen when it comes to the building trades. Um, I haven't heard those conversations okay. taking place amongst our members. You know, obviously there's always that opportunity um, if we've got contractors who are slow that need to seek and and supplement. Mm -hmm. The one thing that's kind of interesting is the timing of it. You know, if there is a time to be able to go down and provide assistance, you know, environmentally for us, it's now because we're entering the cooler winter months. Yeah. And so some of those outside contractors, which that's where it's going to start first, maybe mm -hmm. there will be an opportunity for them to yeah. provide those services because, you know, they're going to be stuck with winter conditions shortly. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I, you know, maybe it's that most people are working here or live here. It's full time. They live here. I'm not. I mean, I'm not leaving my family to go work down in Texas in the heat for, <laughs> you know, a year or something like that. So we were probably isolated, protected a little bit by that. Although perhaps it could change some of the mission trips and and vacations that are scheduled for the yeah. fall and winter. I mean, yeah. if you know, you've got uh, families that will take advantage of of providing, you know manual labor as as their assistance yeah. and support and yeah. and it's necessary in our own country so i don't know maybe you'll see well, some church groups that yeah. instead of you know crossing the border they continue to stay Go in to the Texas. states and help yeah. clean up yeah i mean because look at i mean we went through this 2011 minot and here and you know just the amount of help that was needed to just go to clean up the houses you know gut them take the stuff out and stuff was huge and this was what three times four times the size just in houston of what minot was for instance so they need a lot of help down there um and and then you have you have i'm sure a lot of construction workers whose homes got flooded <laughs> and so they, they can take care of themselves but then boy you're doing your own place and then you you know, I mean, that's all you're doing 24 seven. Yeah. And yeah. Gets, yeah. I think, you know, speed up, like, like everyone, if you've got an opportunity to provide assistance, you know, we always talk to our members about there's two ways to give back, you know, to our organization and to those, you know, across the community. And that's with time or money. Yeah. Um, if you don't have the time, consider making a monetary contribution yeah. to support those who do. Um, and if you've got the time, dedicate it. Yeah. Yeah. Cause they need the help without question, um, down there. So, um, no, another thing, if going to Florida with the hurricane there, um, and I just want to ask you this question. Have you heard anything, say anything about it in the organization here? Um, you know, the, Florida has real strict building codes about, you know, new homes that have been built have been hurricane-proofed. And I guess they, they saw this in neighborhoods where one house was an older house, not up to that standard in a new house that was. And a new house came through just fine, and the other one was, eh, you know, any word on, you know, <laughs> and Houston was like, you know, yeah, everybody thinks, oh, there's no building codes there, but any scuttlebutt or I don't know I mean there, there's always the fear that you're going to have a, an immediate reaction that's not necessarily yeah. thought out um, when it comes to changing regulations and ordinances because of yeah. something that is an unusual circumstance and this is an unusual circumstance um, you know hurricanes take place regularly which you know those communities are often well prepared for but not to the degree that we did and you know we run into the same concern with with you know just flooding in general mm -hmm. you know are we going to see uh, increase and overburden some regulations because we had an anomaly back in 2010 and surely that can happen what what our job is is to you know really encourage those who are making these rules and regulations to step back and consider um, the implications and unintended consequences of those decisions and while we support creating safer homes we can't do so at the um, devastation of access to homes yeah. for here and in the future yeah. and so it, it's always with moderation I think it, moderation is the best practice and and you know think about the odds think about the impacts and and, 
you know, work together collectively. The one thing that we really encourage on a a very local level with the Bismarck Man and Home Builders Association is that, you know, we have a a strong relationship with, you know, the communities that are creating and the commissioners who are creating these rules and ordinances so that they can see not only, you know, on paper how things how things look, but how they can be applied out in the field. Because often where you run into issues is in that disconnect between what seems right. and, And of course, it looks right, but it might not be applicable or easily applied. And there's a solution um, that's that's better presented that can get to that same result. I, I, I totally agree with that. That's, you know, it's so easy to overact to something and go over the top. Like the law that we don't, we reverse the name Frank Dodd in this show <laughs> because we don't want to make no, it seem like we don't me. like you. It's oh. not Dot Frank, it's Frank Dodd. Um, you know, that was an overreaction. It was. And we don't want to see this happen in Florida or Texas either, mm-hmm. that you're overreacting. And because then it becomes, then it starts creeping into every place else. And stuff that they need to do on there does not going to apply in North yeah. Florida. Yeah, generally speaking, yeah. you know the best decisions aren't made when you're highly emotional, yeah. uh, in either direction. Exactly. You know, highly optimistic you usually end up overextending yeah. yourself. Yeah. And if you are um, more overly concerned and scared, again, you're not pushing yourself to, you know, reach as far as you could and excel. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, we just all we have to do is go back to 2007 and we see. Okay, we. We were overly excited and allowed all these weird yes. loans to be done. Yes. And then we went the other way with Opposite. Frank Dodd and said, well, we can't have any of that and mm-hmm. killed everything, you know. So um, very <laughs> that's very appropriate, I think. Um, so I hope they, um, you know, take that in consideration for the people in t- Florida and Texas uh, because – you know, don't overreact to what happened, but just try and take that step back. Like, yeah, you said, well, and it's imperative that you know you keep track of that. It's it's really difficult for um, a, an average business owner to keep tabs not only on what's happening within their oh, business, yeah. the confines of their their daily routine, but then to you know take the time to discover what might impact them at a, a state or a federal level. And that's where associations come in really handy, yeah. and that they can lean on us um, because they can count on having someone who's reading through the proposed changes to to ordinances. Um, They can count on someone in Washington who's paying attention to any kind of rulemaking changes um, and advocating on their behalf. And so it's a wonderful opportunity to to stay connected and involved by supporting associations, whether it's ours, Chambers of Commerce, or others. All right. Okay. Fall Parade of Homes starts tonight at 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock. Goes through Sunday. Goes through Sunday. Doors are open today, 6 to 9. Again, tomorrow, 6 to 9, 11 to 5, and 12 to 5. Get the app. App on Android or Apple. Search BMHBA. Okay. And you can buy a ticket at any of the houses on the Parade of Homes. Absolutely. All right. Thank you so much, Dot. Thanks for, for having me. Us. All right. Jim, what are we leaving on? Rock and roll dreams come through. All right. Right here on the Dakota Housing Network next week. <laughs> <laughs>